Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, rocking his ACDC shirt today, Landon Porter. Landon, how's it going, man? It's fantastic, Nathan. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. You posted this morning, actually, about uh, music on your Facebook on your Facebook feed. And this is the weird thing. Me and you have completely opposite tastes in music, but we get along great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not the taste in music that we need to share. It's the fact that we both actually have a well-thought-out, well-exercised taste in music that we appreciate. That's what matters. Okay. Um, I, I just thought it was funny because I was going through the stuff. I think you said uh, you like mountain rock music. You were like, I'm, I'm going to start a mountain rock jam playlist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, and Tool. Those are my three, right? That's like, you can sum me up there. But I like all kinds of stuff from 60s and 70s rock, like ACDC, Led Zeppelin, like all of that old shit, right? Um, and I dig, actually, I dig some weird um, new wave and, and alternate stuff from the 80s, like The Cure and Depeche Mode and shit like that, right? Because uh, I'm an 80s baby. And then I, I totally dig EDM and trance and techno and shit like that. Um, and there's, there's some stuff in the, the Grateful Dead range that I dig. Dave Matthews, I'm a huge Dave Matthews fan. That's all kind of my stuff. Now, if you go back to the 80s and the 90s, all of the actual rap music, like Ice Cube, Ice T, right? Like rap music, like real rap music from back in the day. Easy E like Biggie, Tupac. Yeah, I can totally get down with that. I don't listen to it on a regular basis, but I can totally... R&B and like the new... Blake or Drake or whoever, that's not my gig. That's not for me. (laughs) Country music, no fucking thank you. There's a couple of rock and roll country, like old school stuff that I dig, but like like the the radio station country music, eh, I don't fucking think so. Not for me. Yeah, I'm... I love War Pigs. Actually, War Pigs is probably one of my favorite songs of all time because, mm-hmm. I mean, if you know me, you're like, yeah, that's definitely a Nathan song. Um, but yeah, 80s, 90s hip hop, that's definitely where it was at for me. But th- I think that it was probably War Pigs. That's maybe where we find that overlap. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, so uh, music aside, what do we got on this week's podcast agenda? Last week's episode, we did live in the Facebook group. It was ep- episode 69. We titled it Changing Positions, you know, because me. Um, <laughs> and that was that was kind of spurred by uh, a situation that a client of mine went through that was just absolutely as gross as could possibly be. And I know that there's a lot of new people in our group, and there's, an, there's a lot of new people that are listening to the podcast. Um, I Literally, I'm getting probably two or three messages a day from people that – I'm binge watch. I'm binge listening or binge watching the podcast, and it's rad. And we've kind of gotten into the 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 weeds and the details a lot, and we've covered a bunch of the little little things. But it's been a while since we kind of talked about the overall idea of client acquisition from a non douche canoe stance. That I figured, hell, maybe it's a good idea to review that. Okay, so. Part of the title for this week's episode is I'm not for everyone. Why is understanding that important? Cool. Before, before we do that, let me, let me use this preface. Sales, like learning how to do sales and client acquisition, learning how to acquire clients are two totally different things. Okay. Client acquisition, learning how to do client acquisition is easy and it doesn't take very long. Learning sales, learning how to really sell something takes a long time. That's my opinion. And I've got proof on both sides of that. And so I'm going to stick to it. If you disagree, we might be proving my point right now. Client acquisition relies heavily on natural relatability. Selling relies heavily on manufactured relatability. 
here's what I've kind of figured out for myself over the last 10 or 15 years. I don't like everyone. That doesn't mean that I don't think everyone is inherently good. That just means that if I had to pick out of a group of a thousand people, the 20 or 30 that I want to spend the next five or six days with locked in a cabin in the woods with no internet, no ability to escape, I would want the ability to pick 20 or 30 people that I actually wanted to have to hang out with. That's client acquisition. So that's kind of what I teach. And to your point, I'm not for everyone. If I had to pick out of a thousand people, 20 or 30 people that I was stuck in a cabin within the mountains with no escape, I don't want to be a day and a half into it wishing that I could like clobber somebody to death because I couldn't fucking stand them. Well, if that's the case, then what does that mean? That means that people like us, like us, your, you, the person listening to this, are not for everybody. And that's okay. As long as you make the distinction on who you are and are not for, your life gets really simple. That's what I mean by that. So let's kind of go through, because I'm going to just be blunt. When I first came into your world, there was a lot of stuff that flew completely against the grain from everything else that I was learning. There was a lot of stuff that Landon would say this, and I'd be like, but everybody else says this. And uh, it took me a while to actually appreciate. I mean, right away, I really liked the, hey, be your weird ass self. That drew me to you right away. But a lot of the other things, I was like, I don't know if I really trust Landon on this one. So let's kind of go through some of the, the differing philosophies, the areas where you don't really go with the mainstream when it comes to sales versus client acquisition. Sure. This has been my most um, repeated current statement. Just because somebody can be your client doesn't mean you should let them. Whoa, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, what? Just because somebody can be your client. What? Yeah. Just because somebody can buy your thing doesn't mean you should let them. That goes against the grain of everybody else in sales. Almost. Almost. Not, not everyone, but the main the main school of, of teaching sales is that not only should you take everybody who can be your client and their money, but you should try and talk a huge majority of the rest of the people into it because by God, your thing can fix their world. Bullshit. I totally don't agree with that. There's one. <laughs> That's a big one too. Um, specifically. And this is something that I've kind of learned after a, a year or so of working with you, but and it's kind of like follow up to that, um, getting great clients versus just getting clients. Uh, sales will teach you how to get clients, but it doesn't really teach you how to get great clients. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's a couple of things in there and we can unpack them as, as you see fit. Here, here's what it comes down to. The difference between a good client and a great client is a great client you would do your thing for for free because you care enough about them that you actually legitimately want to like fix that part of their world, the thing that you can do. You would do it for free because you boys. A good client is somebody that doesn't mess with you too much. They, for the most part, stay out of your hair. They kind of mostly pay you on time, right? They don't bitch too much. They're a good client, but when they see the opportunity, they're going to go with somebody else because it's priced better or right. Somebody else is new and flashy or right. Good client sales, amazing client, client acquisition. It's relationship. And that's what it comes down to is, is the relationship. So just a slight tangent. I have a particular person that follows me on Facebook and has on two different occasions tried to get me to work with them and is constantly pushing back on stuff that I post. Every time I post something, they want to jump in and be like, well, actually, dun, 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 dun. and actually you're wrong because of this, this, and this. And today in a message, 
he hit me up. He's like, you don't mind that I, that I do that. And I was like, no, like, I don't mind. I don't want to live in an echo chamber, but you need to understand that when you tried to hire me, the reason that I told you no was because of that. And he was like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm paid to get results. And if somebody's going to be constantly fighting me or trying to have a piss, a pissing contest or an ego contest with me, they're not going to get the results. So that was the biggest reason why I told you no. And I, I feel like I kind of hurt his feelings a little bit, but a year ago, I would have totally took him on as a client. And this was just a couple of months ago when he, when he tried to get me the second time and I told him no. And if it wasn't for you, I would probably be in a, a miserable relationship fighting with him all the time about trying to get him to do what I'm trying to get him to do. Here's that's perfect. That's exactly what I mean. You and I can say anything we need to, to each other because we're friends. We actually have a relationship and that took, that took some time to establish trust. It took some time to establish, um, real caring, right? Friendships, relationships, they take a little while. You and I could not be friends if you were of the opinion that you had to hard close everybody and that if you didn't take just anybody's money because you're leaving it on the table and that's a stupid decision for a salesperson, we would not have been able to be friends because that dictates that all of the reasons I believe why I believe what I believe you would not be on board with. Therefore, we wouldn't have made it this far. Here's exactly what I mean. If that guy was actually a good friend of yours, you could have said what you needed to say and his feelings would not have been hurt. He would have respected it. Right? If you've got a client whose feelings you hurt, they don't stick around. You've got a client that you actually care about, like, and it's mutual because it can be. So why would it be any other way? Their feelings don't get hurt. They hired a fucking expert. Do your thing, right? Like that's why they hired you. They want to hear it. So another thing that kind of differentiates you from a lot of the people out there is a lot of the processes. And we kind of went into this last week. It's um, here's this thing. You do this step one, step two, step three, you throw it at a bunch of people and people come back trying to hand you money. It's easy. And one of the things that you constantly say is, Hey, it, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. It takes a little bit of effort. Mm -hmm. Yep. Totally. Just because you can get somebody to throw money at you doesn't mean that you should take it. It comes down to this idea it's a people business. Unless you sell widgets or you never have to quote unquote touch your customers, it's a people business. And if you don't treat it as a people business and you treat it as a numbers game, you're going to have sticky situations like that with clients that are gross. I am going to be honest. I think your approach is a lot easier than most of the other approaches, but it does involve a little bit of elbow grease. Mm -hmm. So you know how to skateboard a little bit, right, Nathan? Like you grew up skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Right. So have you ever um, water skied? Oh, okay. Have you surfed? Yes. Okay. So typically if you can skateboard it, it's easier to pick up like surfing or snowboarding or water skiing mm -hmm. typically because your, your body kind of gets a little bit right. Okay. Well, here's, here's the sales thing. If you can open your mouth and speak to other people, you can learn how to sell. Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. The effort aspect to this is you're going to be dealing with other human beings, which means that you're going to have to communicate with other human beings. And there is a currently typical way to automate all the things, automate every aspect, right? Automate the relationship, scale intimacy, and all of that crap because we're lazy and we want to take the effort out of it. And we just want to like wake up and boom, we've got a new client. They're perfect and they pay us on time and all. Da, 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 da. The only way you can actually get a really, really good client is by having a fucking conversation with somebody before they become your client. Guess what? That means that there's some effort to it, but we're not talking about learning Chinese or Navajo or fucking flying to the moon without a, a shuttle, right? If you learn something that's so completely different than anything you've ever done before, like if 
I speak English and I've never really learned another language. Like I know some kitchen Spanish, right? <laughs> going to learn Chinese is going to be difficult. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to be really hard. But learning how to speak English to somebody using a slightly different set of words in the English language is almost effortless. And that's what I'm talking about. You talk to somebody you want to have a relationship with differently than how you talk to somebody when you want their money. It's as simple as that. In the jungle, we have a lot of people that come in there and they're brand new at what they do. Or maybe they're not, they're not even brand new yet. They're just like, I heard you can make a bunch of money doing this. And I heard Landon Porter can help, help me get people to say yes to letting me do it for them. This is something in the marketing game. It's just rampant with people that have no idea how to market, no idea how to copyright. They took a course, they bought a book, and now they're going to learn on somebody else's dime. Um, how important is actually being good at the thing you do in order to making your process work? To work with me at a higher level, you have to be good at the thing you do. To work with me at, a, at, at another level where you get like, here's how to go get your first client or your first couple of clients, you actually have to know that you're going to do the thing that you're going to do, right? You can't just show up in, in my world and go, hey, I want to sell something. Can you teach me how to get clients? Uh, not really. Hey, I, I want to sell Facebook ads and I've not got a client for it yet and I've never actually played with anybody's Facebook ads course. Can you help me get a client? I'd really rather not. Hey, I've been learning this Facebook ads thing for the last six months and I've had like four clients and two others that were trial and like I, I have a really good idea of what I'm doing and man, that really makes me excited and I'm fucking in love with it. Can you help me get some clients? Yeah, totally. Right? Um, if you're going to learn how to identify the right kind of client for you and start conversations with them and then turn them into a client so you can perform the thing they paid you to do, you got to at least know how to do that thing. And I would prefer that you were pretty damn good at it. That doesn't mean you can't be a beginner. However, if you are a beginner at least fucking be interested in the thing that you want to sell them beyond the money that you want in exchange for doing it. That's all I ask. <laughs> Fair enough. One last thing before we're out of here and we kind of touched on this, but I, I want to ask why is it so appealing and um, what's the danger of trying to automate all of our relationships? Cause that's the big promise of most of these CRM softwares out there. And, and a lot of the, the programs that people push is you can make it all automated, but there's a danger to that as well. Yeah. You, you can't actually automate the relationship building aspect. If you're so good at what you do that you've had thousands of clients for it. If you're so good at the thing that you do that you've had tens of thousands of customers for the thing that you do. Yeah. You can automate the fuck out of it all day long because you've got all the information you need to answer every question, every step of the way through automations that you don't need to be there. Think of Salesforce. Salesforce is marketing. They've done it and they've sold it to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of customers that they've been asked and had to answer every question. They know exactly who it's for and exactly who it's not for. And they make no bones about that. Most of us don't have hundreds of thousands or millions of clients. If you did, you wouldn't be listening to me. You wouldn't be listening to anybody. Now, until you get to that point, you actually have to build relationships with people. And this is where people get confused. I market a lot. And by a lot, I mean several times a week. I'm speaking to more than one person at a time about, hey, this is who I am. Hey, this is, I'm kind of friggin' weird. Hey, I do this thing with these kind of people. Like, hey, this is the thing. That's marketing. I'm not automating building a relationship. I am actually there building a relationship. You can't automate that. Can I take that content like this podcast and put it up for people to listen to in the future? Absolutely. 
But guess what? It's not part of an automation sequence designed specifically to get somebody to buy a thing. Like it doesn't work that way. I think the other thing too is that gets lost is we look at our email list and we're like, oh, I got 5,000 people on my email list or I got 15,000 people in my Facebook group. And we forget that those are all actual individual people. We start to look at them as a number, as a part of a group rather than as actual people. And that also tends to lead to disconnect. Uh, it leads to a lack of sincerity and I'm sure some other things that I can't even think of right now. At the end of the day, you're still talking to a one other person, even if you're marketing to a bunch of people. Like we did the, the last episode for the podcast. We did it live in the Facebook group. When I go live in the Facebook group, I'm, I'm literally talking to a one other person specifically when I do this podcast and I say, you, you're listening to this. I'm speaking to you. I'm not talking to guys. Hey guys. Hey everybody. Holy crap. Oh my God. We're going to do this thing guys. Right? No. One person. doesn't matter if there's 15,000 of them or 15 of them. They're all individual people. <sighs> Makes me nuts. <laughs> All right. I apologize for riling you up, but I, th I think it was a good point that needed to be made. Landon, if people want to go check out more episodes of the podcast and maybe dive a little bit deeper into your world, where's the, the best places to go? Salesgorillapodcast.com and you'll want to check out episode 69. It was a hoot. Um, and then the second place is getting clients without being salesy. It's our Facebook group. Go check me out there. All right, man. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't stand. And guess what? That's probably mutual. Peace out.